Each year, the Small College Basketball Association presents the Lifetime Achievement Award to an individual who has demonstrated continuous commitment to small college basketball, including measurable, lasting, and sustained leadership and service, as well as an impact on the game over a career or lifetime. The Lifetime Achievement Award is presented each year at the Small College Basketball National Awards Show. I sincerely thank all the members of the Small College Basketball Association that have joined our membership since we've gotten started. Along with our sponsors, Small College Basketball Association helps to support special nights like tonight. Obviously, I encourage each of you to join the Small College Basketball Association to help support events like this, our Hall of Fame induction, our Hall of Fame Classic, Champions Classic, etc. I want to just give a, a nod and an incredible thank you to those that not only have joined our association, but have joined as lifetime members of the Small College Basketball Association. I'm going to quickly read those names to acknowledge those people. But I also, for those that have been around the game for a while, will realize this also reads like the who's who of college basketball that are part of our uh, national or our lifetime members of the Small College Basketball Association. Those are Harry Statham, Jim Poteet, Larry Holly, Jim Nelson, Bill O'Dell, uh, Roy Pickerel, George Tinsley, a guy named Jack Sigma, uh, Del Harris, Larry Smith, John Rinka, John Hudson, Jeff Lanham, uh, Greg McAleenan, uh, Danny Miles, Herb McGee, Dave Robbins, Elmore Smith, John Pierce, Abe Gotiner, uh, Sundance Wicks, Ryan Cottingham, Greg Tonigal, Steve Ritter, Kelly Wells, Craig Doty, Matt Lewis, Matt O'Brien, Todd Eisner, Mike Schauer, Chris Corver, Kenny Davis, Bob Hoffman, Bart Lundy, uh, Joe Nyland, Chris McCabe, Jeff Wilson, Gary Bands, Kim Elders, and Jeremy Brown. I want to sincerely thank all those that are lifetime members of the Small College Basketball Association. This year's recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award is Jim Poteet. I'll have a few comments on Coach Petit in a few moments, but first I'd like to bring up a couple people to talk about Jim Poteet. And those two people are the original Lifetime Achievement Award winner, our inaugural, Mr. John Hudson, who also happens to be the longest tenured commissioner, 38 years in the history of collegiate athletics, as well as bringing up Lauren Gresham, who's the longtime president at Southern Nazarene University. So let's bring up uh, Lauren Gresham and Mr. John Hudson. Take it away. I'm going to start this off for Lauren and myself. I want to say that we're both proud and honored to be here to introduce Jim Poteet for this prestigious award. I actually feel like it's a little bit of deja vu for me to be introducing Jim because a few years ago, I've got to tell a John McCarthy story. He called me and he said, hey, I'd like for you to come to Kansas City. We're going to have a presentation the first time we're going to do college, small college basketball, and we'd like for you to come up and be part of it. And I said, okay, I'll check my schedule and maybe I can make it or maybe I can't. Well, he said, well, I really need you to come. And I said, I'll do, I'll do my best. Well, a few days later, he called me and he said, we really need you to come, and if you'll keep it to yourself and not let anybody know what's going on, I need you to introduce a guy that you know really well for an award we're going to give him. I said, okay. Anybody who it might be so I can get ready? He said, well, you probably know it's probably his Jim. Okay, fair enough. So they got me up here. McCarthy tricked me. Poteet tricked me. I'm sitting there waiting to get up and introduce Jim, and all of a sudden Jim introduces me. So, like I said, this is kind of deja vu for me. i got to say this about Jim Poteet. I've known him for more than 50 years. He is a great ambassador for the game of basketball, and for small college basketball in particular. <clears throat> but what Jim is good at is he takes young coaches under their wings, and under his wing, and, and helps them and gets them going again in Oklahoma, where we were from and where he came to coach. i got to say this, when Jim came to Oklahoma, it was kind of a, uh, when he came to Bethany Nazarene, it's a long time ago, more than 50 years ago, Oklahoma coaches were pretty much a, a it was an old school deal. But most of the guys had been there for a long time. They did things a certain way, and they really didn't like having young guys come in and, and take over and try to act like they knew what they were doing. So 
Jim came in and he was the first time somebody had come in young and aggressive and got after it and went out and said, we want to play you guys, even though you're better in coaches and better in teams, and then go out and, and try to beat them and then beat them. So anyway, Jim made his mark pretty early on. When I started coaching, Jim took me under his wing and gave me some opportunities and some guidance and advice that helped me, helped me get through my short coaching career. But anyway, Jim also, one thing that you might not know about Jim Poteet, and I'm just going to throw this out there, he's, uh, McCarthy's given me credit for being a conference commissioner for a long time, but Jim Poteet was actually the founder of the Center Athletic Conference in Oklahoma, and they were belong, the schools there belonged to a league called the Texoma, which was half Texas and half Oklahoma schools. And Jim called me one day and he said, hey, he said, we need, we need to get a new constitution written for a league. He said, you're a lawyer, well, you can do that. And I said, well, I might be able to do it if you'll give me something to copy off of or plagiarize from. Anyway, <laughs> we met and, and all of a sudden, you know, we've got a league. They accepted whatever I put together. And I got to tell you about the league that Jim Poteet started because he gets the credit for having the idea to do it in the first place. He was the leader of these guys back in those days. But that league has since won more national championships, not just in men and women's basketball, but across the board in sports than any other league in the NAI in the history of, of NAI basketball. So it's pretty impressive what Jim Poteet did from that standpoint. Now what I'm going to do right now is turn the introduction over to a guy who played basketball with Jim, so he's known him longer than I have. And he also coached with Jim, and he later became a head coach. And I got to tell you, he's one of my good friends for many, many years. And he was the na he won the national NAI championship in men's basketball in 1981, right here in Kansas City, Oklahoma, Kansas City, Missouri. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lauren Gresham, take it over, Lauren. Thanks, John. <clears throat> I'll make mine short and quick. I met Jim Poteet when we were 18 years old. From there, we played on the same college team in California. Later, I was uh, off out of the country. He sent me a message and said, I'm going to coach in Oklahoma. Would you be my assistant? So I became his assistant. So I saw him from several different perspectives. I watched him start two programs pretty much from a basic scratch level and take them to a really high level. Later on, I watched him move from step to step, place to place, wherever he was. He was a basketball coach. I wasn't a real coach. I tried to coach a little bit, but Jim's a real coach. But he also is a real student of the game. And some of the best work I think he's done is in the last 10 years in writing the history of several programs with incredible uh, records. And he's done that by researching clear back to the beginning of basketball at the YMCA Training Institute in Massachusetts. If you want to read something very interesting about our game, get one of his books, go back and find out the real story of how basketball was started. I don't know the committee. I don't know who chose Jim for the Lifetime Achievement Award. I can't think of anybody who is a better advocate for, a salesman for, small college basketball than Jim Pochi. I didn't um, purposely didn't put any notes here. I just wanted to speak from the heart for just a moment. Um, I got introduced to Jim Poteet from his son Josh, who is here. I had the opportunity to serve as the director of the NAI National Basketball Championship when I moved to Kansas City in 2007. By the time we got to 2012, it was the 75th anniversary of the NAI tournament, and, uh, and we were celebrating in many different ways, choosing an all-time team, uh, choosing the top 75 moments, and so on. And Josh Poteet, his son, was working with me in that endeavor to help celebrate the anniversary. And after we, uh, we chatted for a long time about the history of the game, the history of the tournament, Josh kind of stopped me one day and he said, you do know my dad, right? And I said, I don't know your dad. He said, you should know my dad. And for the last decade plus, um, 
you know, used to say, you know, we used to talk each week, but that's not accurate. It's closer to like every other day uh, that Coach Poteet and I talk. He's 83 now. And um, I knew when I called him to tell him about becoming the, uh, the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award, I knew what this would mean to him. And, um, and I know what it means to other people to celebrate. I know I talked to Coach Holmquist, who lives in California, and uh, before we even talked about him being named the Harry Statham Coach of Impact Award, he said, I'm going to plan to be there for Coach Poteet. And Jim Bond, who we talked about earlier, just drove from Colorado because he wanted to be here. There's multiple university presidents that are here to be here to honor Jim Poteet because they know what he means to our game. Uh, the accolades you'll see on the video we're about to play speak for themselves, but the impact on people and on this game, we're not able to capture in a video. Um, this means a lot to him. And I told my wife, um, this is going to be a really special moment um, for me to be able to, uh, to introduce Jim Poteet because this has been his life's work. And at 83 years old, to give him uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award, it's obvious that he's earned it and he's deserved it. But I know what this means to him, his family, and so many people. So please take a moment and, uh, and enjoy the video. There's a lot of wonderful messages from a lot of wonderful people, but this is a really special moment for a lot of people. Please turn to the video. Thank you. The winner of the 2024 Small College Basketball Lifetime Achievement Award is Dr. Jim Poteet. Coach Poteet has been the head coach at Biola, Bethany Nazarene, Seattle Pacific, and Kansas Christian College. He's won the NCCAA National Championship in 1974 and 1977, and was named as the National Coach of the Year in 1974 and 1975. In addition to his collegiate coaching career, Coach Poteet has been a significant figure in international basketball. He's helped develop the NAI's Champions of Character program, served as the commissioner of the Association of Christian College Athletics, written multiple books on college basketball, and has become one of the world's foremost experts on free throw shooting. In his accomplished career, he's earned over 300 gold medals and has also made 489 consecutive free throws. Poteet was named to the NAI Hall of Fame in 2014 and was named a Distinguished Alumni Award recipient from Point Loma Nazarene in 2024. From the Church of the Nazarene, Poteet was awarded the Distinguished Service Award in 2013. He was named to the Point Loma Nazarene Athletic Hall of Fame in 2002. Dr. Poteet is a member of the Small College Basketball Hall of Fame Committee, the chair of the Small College Basketball Association, and a member of Small College Basketball Foundation's Board of Directors. All Biola people in, in the basketball realm should be really grateful to you, and I know I am because I know your history, I know how much you put into it, and I'm very thankful for you in many ways. So congratulations again on a much deserved award, Jim. Jim, your impact on all of small college basketball from the NAI to the NCCAA and more is monumental, but your impact on lives is even more all the way from Pasadena Christian all the way to the day at Kansas Christian and stops at, at Point Loma, Southern Naz, Southwestern Christian, all of those you have had impact. Jim, we celebrate you, we honor you, God's best on you, and I hope you're not done yet because we all need you. Congratulations. I played for Coach Jim Poteet from 1971 to 74 at Bethany Nazarene College. That was probably one of the biggest decisions I ever made in my life, leaving Southern California to go to Oklahoma. I've coached for almost 50 years and I have to say that that's been one of the greatest pleasures of my life, learning from him how to, uh, to be a great coach. Coach, what a great job you've done and this is a great achievement. Congratulations, love you. Jim Poteet tells me how he watched me play at Eastern New Mexico University in the 1960s in Municipal Auditorium. He is the most authoritative small college historian I've ever been around, plus being an absolute great coach. What an honor for me to say these things. In modern society, he would be a five-star recruit. 
just want to tell you how much I'm thankful for the uh, role that you played in my life. You've influenced so many different people. Um, the success that I've had, both as a player and as a person, and professionally, can all be attributed to the the role that you played in helping me develop as a player. Really delighted to call him my friend of these many, many years. And so I really wish him uh, the very best. He is not slowing down, that's evident. He will be, I'm sure, continuing to advocate for and promote small college basketball into the future. We're delighted to congratulate him for this Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, Coach, we've had a lot of great memories over the years. Um, I really enjoyed playing for you. I. I, I want to just say to this group that um, a lot of what I am is what you poured into me, and I appreciate that. Congratulations on this great honor. Congratulations, Coach. You're, I can't think, a more deserving person as a player and as a coach and administrator of small college basketball. You've been an ardent advocate and supporter for many years, and I can't think of anybody more deserving. Coach Monteith, thank you for the role that you've played in my life uh, professionally. Uh, as it relates to basketball. Uh, we marvel at the uh, influence that you have across the country and the number of people that uh, know you and look up to you for the contribution that you've made to a uh, small college arena. And uh, con again, congratulations on uh, this milestone in your life. Uh, may you and Peggy enjoy that and continue to enjoy the years uh, as you move ahead through retirement. The gym has been so instrumental in the game of college basketball, but also uh, a leader in the NEI and also a Hall of Fame member for us. So Jim, uh, sorry I can't be there, but just wanted you to know how much at the NEI we're thinking of you and appreciate your leadership over these years and uh, just all you've done for the, for the game of basketball and particularly at the small college level. So hope y'all are having a great evening and I'll see you soon. Congrats, Dad, on getting the Small College Basketball Lifetime Achievement Award. If anyone deserves this award, it's definitely you with how much you've poured your life into small college basketball and the game of basketball in general. Um, you're definitely the inspiration for why I chose to be a high school athletic director and basketball coach. And um, I'm always trying to emulate you every day while I'm coaching. Congrats. Small College Basketball is extremely proud to present Dr. Jim Poteet with the 2024 Lifetime Achievement Award. Jim Poteet. Well, thank you, and I want to congratulate all the winners tonight. I know it's been a long evening. I'm going to stick to my script and try to, try to say what I want to say. Since even before the inception of the Small College Basketball Association, I have been passionately involved in the idea as envisioned by John McCarthy. My son Josh, who was employed by the NAIA in 2012, was asked to help McCarthy administrate the 75th annual NAI tournament. There I met John, who with great passion shared his vision of the Small College Basketball Association. As I listened, my response to him was this, if you don't do it, nobody else will. Josh and I, John and I became good friends and I have spent many hours assisting him as the SCB Association has taken its place as the capstone project highlighting the accomplishments of the young men and coaches of small college basketball. As I have, wit have witnessed almost every SCB Hall of Fame induction and national awards show, one consistent element of every event has been the introductions by winsome Dan Snell as the voice of God. As I've been moved by these introductions and Dan's wonderful voice, I began to think about the hand of God and its influence on my playing and coaching career. I played high school basketball in West Texas, and my goal was to play college basketball in a Christian college. 
I was fortunate to be recruited to Pasadena College, now Point Loma Nazarene University. My years at Pasadena College were outstanding, and I made the decision that coaching basketball was going to be my life's work. But I had yet to understand that basketball coaching would become more than just a job. My job would become a calling. It would become a ministry. I'll explain that in a moment. As I continued to mature and somehow made my way through school, I made probably the best decision of my life when I met and courted Peggy Ellis, my wife, on the campus of dear old Pasadena College. It was love at first sight, and we've now been married for over 62 years. Before graduating, however, I also learned about some wonderful basketball happenings that took place halfway around the world. I heard about a man named Don Odell, basketball coach at Taylor University, a small Christian college in Indiana. Odell had founded a ministry called Venture for Victory, a summer sports evangelism ministry that shared the Christian message throughout the world. The team, nicknamed Evangelists and Sneakers, played games against the best competition in many countries and at halftime shared the message of Jesus through music and the spoken word. And tonight, there are at least seven of us who are veterans, alumni of the Venture for Victory program. If you could see, I'd have them stand, but they are here. As I've learned more about this ministry and its success, the call to combine coaching and sports ministry grew and became a motivating force in my life. As I learned more about the game of basketball and its invention, I began to see why it was such a great game for me to live out my calling. What moved me most was watching young men bond together and tap into the magic that arises when they focus with their whole heart and soul on something greater than themselves. When you experience that, it's something you'll never forget. And soon that was happening in the programs where I coached. We were taking our teams on summer ministry trips. We were ministering in local churches. We were conducting basketball camps and sharing our Christian faith. The programs were becoming much larger than just winning basketball games. And those teams happened to be winning games and championships. The teams that I coached impacted the campus culture through the lives of our players. A culture had been built and the culture became the capstone that continued to drive those programs. Most coaches I know spend most of their time focusing on the X's and O's of teaching the game. I must admit that at times I've fallen into that trap myself. But what fascinates me most about the game of basketball is not the endless chatter about dunk highlights and game strategy that ESPN streams on our television screens, but what challenges me much more is what I'd like to call the spiritual nature of the game. For you see, basketball was invented by a theology student, Canadian James Naismith. In his written recollection, Naismith tells of being on his knees each evening at the YMCA training school in Springfield, Massachusetts, asking for God's guidance as he completed his professor's assignment to invent a new indoor game he could use to mold the lives of young men and women. Now that first game was played in December 1891 using two peach baskets nailed to an overhead running track at a height of 10 feet. Needless to say, May Smith invented a winner. His divinely inspired game became the first sport to be used by Venture for Victory in an organized approach to share the gospel of Jesus around the world. So for me, the art of transforming a group of young, ambitious players 
into an integrated championship team is not just a mechanized process. It requires more than the ability to teach them the fundamentals of the game and how to win. With a simple ball, rim, and a net, it provides the opportunity to influence the lives of young people through the divinely inspired game of James Naismith. It has been my privilege to follow that calling and see the hand of God at work in the lives of young men who played for me. Thank you, John, Small College Basketball, for this wonderful award. It is a highlight of my life. Thank you.